Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. I am here with Alan Mash today. We are going to check out the differences between the C Canon C200 and the Canon C300 Mark II. So Alan, you've had the C300 Mark II for a couple of years now? Yep, couple, I got it right when it went to $12,000 range. Okay, so that's twice what I paid for the yeah. um, C200B, which is what I have. Right, and then right after yours came out, this dropped to 10 and I was pissed. But you've had it for a couple, a couple, couple of years? years? Yeah, yep. worked with it on a couple a lot of, a lot of shows. hundred shoots? Probably, yeah. I mainly use it for a gimbal. I started doing gimbal work and I just get hired for gimbal work. I have a Ronin that carries it. Mm -hmm. And I get hired for that mostly. Now, uh, the, probably the biggest difference between these two is 4K, uh, 8-bit 420. MP4. MP4. 10-bit 422 and 10-bit 444. 12-bit uh, 444, 2K. And then if you want to jump up to 12-bit um, raw, raw. External. Ex no, internal. I have to do external. Yeah, you can do raw external on this right. one, raw internal on this to see fast. Right. Dual dual C fast slots. Yep. Um, single C fast slot. Yep. You can't really tell because this is covered in all kinds of gear. It yep. has, it has the TV Logic screen. It has the yep. shape cage, the shape mat box. It has the handle, the um, V mount, uh, V bob battery plate at the back. Mm. It has one C fast slot yep. and two SD slots. Yep. You have two C fast and one SD. Right. Uh, if people out there are thinking of um, buying a Canon cinema camera or cinema camera generally. Um, and they're kind of torn between the two of these. What do you, where would you say, um, you know, what, where, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses? Well, the strength, this, if you want a broadcast ready camera, this mm -hmm. is it. Yep. If you don't want a massive bit rate to deal with, you know, like tons of file. Yep. This thing, even at the lowest setting at 50 megabits per second, it's 10 bit 422, which is broadcast ready. So I usually shoot in that, if, if, unless it's needed for the next step up in HD is 160 megabits per second. So how much of the 50 megabits per second do you get on the 512? Oh, man. Hours. Uh, almost three hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did a comedian the other day. We did his whole show. I never cut. It was three hours. He just said, keep rolling. Yeah. And we're filming in L.A. on his birthday. and uh, unbe It's unbelievable. Man. Broadcast ready. So you can do the yes. same thing with this, with two SD cards, but you're only getting 4K, 420. 420, 8-bit 420. Or you can swap multiple CFAS cards and shoot, like I have, um, multiple 512 gig cards, and then... Transcode the um, the raw down into ProRes ProRes four two two because you and I both have the you have the XC fifteen or XC ten ten I have the XC ten and the the four two two that comes off that isn't nearly as good as the four two zero that comes no, off it's this not. it's not because the sensor is much smaller yeah. you know the processors aren't as good so really it's like you know they they say that you know bitrate doesn't lie well it sort of does <laughs> yeah i mean and that sensor you can burn that sensor you can overexpose that sensor very easily i noticed about yep. that you can really crank these bu puppies overexpose them yep. and but that little xc10 xc15 you can really overexpose that sensor do you uh a, a sort of a su supposedly design defect of both of these cameras is that the vent port is right where the ear <laughs> you would you would right. if you were shooting handheld right where your ear is yeah. so when i have it on this when i have this handheld i wear um earphones do you really so yeah. you don't hear it well so it doesn't uh, it doesn't blow straight in your ear yeah. which is kind of annoying my cure for that is running a monopod i usually hook this to a monitor and have it holding right in front of me mm. And instead of a shoulder rig. I don't like shoulder rigs very much. I sometimes use them, but I have a monopod set to where I put it on a belt right mm -hmm. here and it kind of, uh, and I can look through that, that eyepiece. So like a, like a pole holding kind yeah, of rig. Yeah. yeah. And I got it set up with a adjust one, everything. I use a seven inch display just because I've, you know, came from the DSLR world yeah. where the screen wasn't that much bigger than this. You get like a 1.5 oh, yeah. inch screen. Your Mark three over there is about the same as that. Right? That's right. Oh. And um, it would drive me crazy because it's just too small, I think, to get critical focus, too small to get a sense of what it's going to look like. So if people are interested in shooting uh, weddings, that's one of the first thing, uh, that's one of the most, um, you know, the biggest markets. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably say uh, C200. Less expensive, obviously you're gonna you're gonna pay it off much quicker. Right. Um, you don't need broadcast quality. 
Um, <laughs> I'd say most weddings are delivered in uh, 1080p. Yes. Yep. So 4K 420 is going to be plenty for um, you know for a wedding. And you can and do that in MP4. Exactly. A you little know, higher bit rate. Yeah, you're not going to have to go out and buy expensive CFAST 2.0 cards, right. um, which yeah. this needs to shoot raw and this needs to shoot anything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you want to grade it in MP4, you can still do C-Log, right? Yeah, yeah. you can do uh, C-Log 3. Right, not yeah. C-Log 1. You can it's do C-Log like C-Log 3 or yeah. YDR on this, same as on this. Yeah, and it's I think it's 50 megabits per second in HD mm -hmm. and then 150 in 4K. Yeah. And it's MP4 420, but you know... That's enough for a wedding. It's beautiful. If you burn in the standard picture profile on here, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. If you if, if you got your if you got your exposure and your white balance right. 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 The other thing is it, with this one, if you wanted to do it, if you're delivering in 1080p and you don't want to uh, mess around with big 4K files, which yeah. slow down a lot of people's computers, right. mine included, um, you can get an external recorder and record 10 bit 2K um, 422. Just get a little like uh, the Atomos Ninja Star. You could only do the <laughs> 2K 10-bit 422 over SDI. So you need an SDI recorder, uh, but you can still trigger it. Uh, use the internal monitor, still trigger it over the record prompt. So when you hit record on the camera, it starts recording on the recorder as well. Right. And you can use the, the Canon monitor for monitoring if you bought that. That's right. That's Sony right. If you, if you buy the non-B version, the full right. price version, you yeah. can use that. Right. Yeah. Um, so you uh, have you tried this on the Ronin S? Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I was just talking about that. I... That's what I'm talking about when I'm holding it like that with the Ronin S. Without this, I'm looking through that little eyepiece. So the Ronin this, S with setup, with a with an extern extendable handle. Yes, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I sometimes I use it with the the one that comes with it, and I put it I put in a, a 14 inch monopod under that, and I put it in a, a gotcha. belt right here. Gotcha. I literally literally use it like a monopod. And you haven't had problem with the the EVF or the larger size of the C three hundred not clearing on the um, Ronin S. I just I, I do a little bit if you're doing some really dramatic moves, but anytime I use it like that, I'm just using it for someone standing there talking, maybe a little movement, gotcha. usually events or something, but not. I haven't used it in like movies or anything. I Have you tried like, underslinging it with the with, with the this? Yeah. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my with this with. Did mine. you really? Yeah, it works great. But you had to set it up like that. You, yeah. The the problem is you can't put it down. That's the right. real issue, right? I mean, but because you can't undersling from top, and you can do yeah, that. because okay. because I have the B, I'm able right, to go right, from right. from top to bottom, yeah. and it it doesn't have the EVF that gets in the way. Yeah, this it doesn't have that guy that yeah. gets in the way. So, uh, what lenses do you have on? This? That is my main lens. Did I bought this thing and I paid for it a oh, hundred times over? This is a seventeen to fifty five two point eight EFS. Yeah, it's L series glass. Canon told me this is L series glass in here, but they couldn't put the red ring around it because it's, it's an EFS S lens made for crop sensors. Yep. But this is the main. You shot a movie. You shot a movie with this, right? I did. I yeah. shot my Brooklyn tie with that. Right. Right. The, the issue we had with it though was a couple of scenes were in the rain, and um, it was a rental from Adorama, I believe, yeah. and it was a couple of years old. And as it got wet, the focus gear stopped working. Oh. So we had a remote follow focus on it, and oh. we kept blowing focus we didn't know why right. and then we realized that as the as we were moving focus it, the um, friction had the water wow, had affected really? the friction so yeah. you would move it and nothing would happen i wish canon would update this to like a modern uh, a quieter motor that's right you know the same you could use the same glass but the motor's pretty loud i hear it sometimes c100 mark three um <clears throat> it's been rumored for a long time hasn't come out yet no one really knows why it was meant to come out at the end of this year yeah. maybe at nab so that the c300 mark three will come out at the end of nate i've heard about that and it specs yeah. but i haven't heard about the c100 for upgradable full frame i know yeah. i know it's yeah. like you know you don't need the c700 then right Hey man, thanks for coming in and bringing Absolutely, your camera man. and talking uh, cinema cameras. Absolutely. Alan Mash, everybody. Uh, <laughs> links in the description as well as links to all this stuff if you want to check out what the current prices are on Amazon. I've got a Patreon now uh, for more in-depth sort of like film tutorials. Check that out in the links below and I will see you next time.